Welcome to The Holistic Entrepreneur with success coach, holistic nurse practitioner, and best-selling author, Bonnie Gressel. Bonnie shares inspirational and enlightening content to educate, empower, and facilitate well-being while nurturing the mind-body-spirit connection. This boost of positive energy will help you manage stress and make the most of your life, allowing you to thrive in the new normal. Now, please welcome the host of The Holistic Entrepreneur, Bonnie Gressel. Well, welcome everyone. This is Bonnie Gressel, your host here at The Holistic Entrepreneur. I am so grateful that you're sharing your valuable time with me today. I so appreciate you. Now, if this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you've tuned in before, welcome back. I hope that you find this will be another valuable episode with tips and insights to help you toward enhanced well-being. Now, I always want to remind you that the information presented here is educational, inspirational, and motivational in nature. But I simply want you to take what fits for you and let go of the rest. This show does not intend or imply to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment either. I always want to remind us all of that little caveat. Now, the other thing that I want to do every time we have a show is to remind you to take a moment for you to remember to just breathe, to breathe with intention just noticing your breath. So just stop and take a moment, unless you're you know, driving or something at the time. But just take a moment, if you can, to stop and notice the air coming in as you breathe in, and the air going out as you exhale. The longer that exhale is, the more relaxing that is to your parasympathetic nervous system. That's that relaxing part of you. So as you're breathing, noticing the air coming in and leaving, I want you to also take a moment to notice what a beautiful human being you are. You are loved. I want to remind you to just stop and notice. Now, this may be the only moment you take for yourself today. And if so, that's the way it is. But it's so important to your well-being. The more you can do this, the better. Now, as we get into the show today, remember to check out the show page before you leave, because I have links to connect with me at bonniegressel.com, and I always have links to whatever it is that we're talking about. And today we're talking about sleep. So I actually have a link to my restful sleep system on the show page as well. And I'd love to hear how it's going for you. So please post your progress or any questions you have on the Facebook page. That link is in the show page as well. And if you tag me, then I'll certainly make sure that I see it and respond to you. Um, Otherwise, things kind of get lost sometimes. So I would love to know how it's going for you. Now today we're talking about sleep because so many people struggle with sleep issues and it's even more so pronounced over this past year, you know, with the COVID pandemic and all of the issues that came with that, it's, it's become a bigger problem worldwide. And maybe you are a person who struggles with sleep. You know, perhaps you have trouble falling asleep because your mind can't shut off, or maybe you wake up and you can't get back to sleep. If you're like me, maybe those nasty night sweats are waking you up in the middle of the night. Sleep disturbances and insomnia issues are so common. And as I mentioned, they've become more of an issue um, with all of the stress and under the effects of COVID-19 and the pandemic. You know, neurologists who specialize in sleep disorders, I found this really interesting, are actually, I mean, they're seeing an increase in sleep disorders that they've actually named it. They've named it covid somnia. I thought that was really interesting. I mean, I know that there was an increase, but so much so that they've developed an actual diagnosis for it. Anxiety and depression are also increased this past year as we're all dealing from the fallout of this pandemic. But anxiety and depression is a whole other topic that's huge. Today, we're going to focus on sleep. Now, if you're wondering, okay, do I have sleep problems? The criteria for chronic insomnia is not as big as you would think. It's not being able to fall asleep within 30 minutes, 
three times a week or more for more than three months. And this is from the Neurology Today uh, magazine. So if you are one of those people who has trouble falling asleep and it's 30 minutes or more, more than three times a week and it's been going on for a while, you probably suffer from chronic insomnia. Chronic insomnia has lots of causes and please seek professional medical treatment if needed. But there are lots of things that we can do too to make it easier to fall asleep and stay asleep. You know, often part of us is worrying about not being able to fall asleep. And that makes it even worse because then the brain kicks in and thinks, oh, I'm not sleeping again. I'm never going to fall asleep. Maybe this is you. I mean, part of sleeping well is actually preparing for bed and a good night's rest. And there are things that we can do for ourselves, but certainly seek professional care if it's warranted. Now, good sleep hygiene can help starting with winding down before you go to bed so that you're relaxed and in the right frame of mind for sleep. Relaxing your body and your mind before you go to sleep is so important. You know, sometimes we expect magic to occur and instantly we're going to fall asleep. Well, that doesn't really happen, does it? You need to take time to get your body ready to go to sleep. You need to relax your body and fall asleep with good thoughts. You know, reading something that's not too engaging can help with falling asleep. Now, if a good novel can be too engaging, and then it's hard to put it down, and that doesn't really help you relax. But something that's really boring, my son used to read the dictionary when he was a teenager because he had trouble sleeping. Listening to soft or instrumental music can help you to come down. Or or my favorite um, thing to do is to just go inside to meditate or do some imagery or some daydreaming. You know, you want to end your day on a positive note. Doing a gratitude practice is a great way to fall asleep. You know, I remember when I would be working on the computer until late and then thinking, oh, it's 10 o'clock, it's time to go to bed. And I would, you know, close down my office and get and you know get up to go to bed. My husband would say, oh, you're never going to get to sleep. You need to settle yourself down first. And I knew that he was right because if I took some time to relax, to meditate or to listen to music or some guided meditation, I knew that it would be much easier for me to fall asleep. And it was. And how many of us go to bed thinking about the things we didn't do today, the things we have to do, the things we're worried about, or what didn't go well that day? Sometimes those thoughts consume much of the time right before we go to bed and right before we fall asleep. So if we fall asleep thinking about stressful things that happened or might happen, then we might have bad dreams, even nightmares. I call them anxiety-laden dreams. And it's because our subconscious mind works things out while we're asleep. So like, unlike our conscious mind, the subconscious mind doesn't stop when we fall asleep. It's what keeps your heart beating and it keeps you breathing. All of those autonom- automatic workings of your body. It also works on things we're thinking about just as we're falling asleep. And that can affect our dreams negatively or positively. And of course, we want it to be positive. So thinking about good things before you fall asleep is so helpful. Spending just a few minutes in gratitude, noticing what you're thankful for that day or recalling a favorite memory, something that makes you feel good. This will help you rest well and wake up feeling refreshed. And certainly, as I mentioned before, get help from a professional if you think you may need help with the sleep disturbance evaluation. Some people with sleep disturbance or insomnia issues benefit from medical checkups, but there are also more things that you can do on your own. And we've talked about a few of them. I want to give you a few more ideas because really it's a lot about sort of retraining your brain to go to sleep. So number one, as I mentioned before, if you're not ready for bed, don't go to bed. You know, working on the computer, watching TV before bed can be too engaging, especially if you're watching like a drama or the news or something like that. So taking time to disengage and unwind before trying to sleep is a good strategy. Calm yourself and relax for about an hour if you can. I mean, if you can only do it for 15 minutes because you're busy until then, that's fine. But The more time you can give yourself to prepare for bed, the better. An hour to an hour and a half is actually best. So if you are like planning to go to bed at 10 o'clock, 
don't be still vacuuming, doing laundry, working on the computer at 8.30, 9 o'clock because you're too wound up. You need to really take some time, maybe uh, maybe a hot bath. You know, some people like to do that before they go to bed. And that really does help to calm things down. And be aware, you know, that that really good book or movie might, you might enjoy it, but it might be too engaging. And so it's not going to really help you for sleep. And of course, avoid those intense dramas, thrillers, or these days, avoid, avoid the news. I encourage everyone not to watch or listen or read any news before going to bed. Do that in the morning because you don't want to go to bed with that stuff. And then creating a ritual or a habit is another really good tip. You know, whatever you do as you prepare for bed, brushing your teeth, washing your face, combing your hair, whatever it is that you do, do that in the same way every night because then it becomes a routine. What you're doing is you're training your brain to know that going to bed and going to sleep is next in the sequence. When you do these things in the same order and in the same way, your brain expects that going to bed and sleeping just comes next. Avoid reading eating, or watching TV in bed. Because over the course of time, again, it gives your body the wrong message. It gives your brain the signal that, okay, I'm going to bed now. It must be time to eat. And that might make you hungry. <laughs> so you want to, and a lot of people have TVs in their, in their bedrooms. So if you want to watch TV before bed, I recommend that you sit in a chair just next to your bed. And then when you're done watching TV, turn off the TV and then get into bed and get ready for sleep. Another strategy is that if you have trouble falling asleep or you wake up in the middle of the night, if you're awake longer than say 20 minutes, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. So get out of bed, pattern interrupt, go, you know, into another room or sit in a chair and just calm yourself down. And then when you're sleepy feeling again, then go back to bed because otherwise, again, your brain, your brain doesn't know that the bed is for sleep. We're giving them all these mixed messages. And then meditation, listening to music, reading can also be helpful in falling asleep. So your action step for this week is to make some changes if you need to in your sleep hygiene, if you have issues getting to sleep or staying asleep. If you truly feel rested when you wake up and you sleep well, awesome. You don't need to do this stuff. They're still really good ideas, but you don't necessarily need to do them to sleep better. I hope you found these tips helpful. And you can... Check the show page for all the links that we talked about today. And until next time, I wish you health, happiness, and abundance. I want to thank you for joining me at the Holistic Entrepreneur Show today. I know that time is our most precious asset, and so I appreciate you spending your time with me. Now, my purpose is to be of the best service to this community. Whether it's your personal or your work life, I'm here to support you. The best place to get the latest scoop is at bonniegressel.com. Everything is there. We can connect and you'll find special offers and gifts that I have for you to help you attain the health, happiness, and abundance you deserve. And I encourage you to sign up for my monthly newsletter for more useful information and exclusive offers. The links are on the show page below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the Holistic Entrepreneur Show on your favorite podcast directory so that you automatically receive the newest episode when it's released. Until next time, this is Bonnie Gressel, wishing you health, happiness, and abundance.